famous sculpture called The Dying Gaul in the Capitoline Museum in Rome. And this is a sculpture, a copy of a sculpture that dates from the 3rd century BC, the original. So this is a Roman copy, once again, of an ancient Greek original. But a Greek sculpture that would have actually come originally from Pergamum on the coast of what is now Turkey. Right, in one of the areas that was a Greek colony. And it was to commemorate an important battle over a group that the Greeks would have looked at as barbarians. It's interesting because in earlier Greek history, if this Gaul was to be represented as defeated, he would have been represented as a barbarian, as somebody who was inherently less than the Greeks. And although I think you could still make the argument that that's the case, if you look at his hair, it's, it's sort of roughly handled, his face, his brow is large, his nose uh, is not sort of as idealized as the Greeks might have represented themselves. Nevertheless, we see his pain We do. In images of death from the classical period and the archaic period, we get a kind of sometimes that archaic smile or a sense of, uh, I don't want to say peacefulness, but a lack of of expression. That's something that transcends that moment of death and something that is eternal and represents perhaps the heroic. Okay, so that's interesting. So, but that would be the Greeks representing themselves, right. right? But here, because perhaps we're seeing a kind of lesser being, not a Greek, uh, somebody outside of the Greek culture, there's a willingness to represent, in a sense, that pain, that suffering, and that weakness. But, it, but also there's a kind of nobility here. That interest in emotion was very typical of the Hellenistic period. So right? this that is a late period. Yeah, move away Greek, from yeah. the, that classical period of the 5th century, the 400s, of that interest in in ideal figures, figures that transcend the everyday, to an interest in figures that are older, figures that display emotion, figures that are are fully human in a way. Yeah, that's right. And this is an extraordinarily human rendering of somebody who's losing his power. Yeah, he's fallen, he's been wounded, you see the... The broken sword. Right, the wound in his... And his rib cage. And, and the horns that have been dropped, that, you know, that he, perhaps he was a herald mm-hmm. as well, or this, this is a heralding. Mm-hmm. And um, he's, he's falling, you know, he's about to lose his strength. We've got a real sort of moment of time here. We a kind of transitional feel moment. feel him yeah. falling to the ground. But even as we feel that, we feel the original power of that body, the, the, oh, you yeah. know, the strength of those arms. Oh, yeah. Um, but, but that's failing. Yeah. And, and it is a really tragic moment. It is. Well, that it's that beautiful athletic body that is now defeated by imminent death. That's what makes us so poignant. There is this real empathy that mm-hmm. exists there, and it, it's, that's right. It really is characteristic of that late, late Greek, that Hellenistic moment. Mm-hmm. 